Can you guys tell that I like cables? Hi, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma, AKA Midsummer Knits, and I make videos about knitting and fiber arts content. If you're new here, I'd really love it if you checked out my videos and give me a subscribe if you're interested in my content. Today's video is going to be a continuation of a series that I've been doing for a while. It is a series where I'm recommending patterns for different seasons of the year. I have previously posted a video in this theme for both spring and summer, so I will link those in the cards and also in the description below. Um, and I've really been enjoying doing these videos. I feel like it's a lot of fun for me to collect pattern ideas and then share them with you guys and talk about why I really enjoy these patterns, why I'm interested in making these patterns. I just feel like it's a really fun video idea and I hope that I've been able to give you guys a little bit of inspiration. For today's video, I actually wanted to do a combination fall and winter video recommending patterns that I think you should make this year. This is honestly because when I made my spring and summer pattern recommendation videos, I didn't really feel like there was a super distinct difference between the two and I felt like it really could have just been one video. So in my mind, it made more sense to make a combination fall and winter of 2023 pattern recommendations video. And so that is what I'm doing today. Also, just as a heads up, I personally don't really knit a ton of winter accessories and I'm not going to have a ton of like scarves and hats and mittens that I have in my queue. So I have only recommended a couple of winter accessories. If you guys actually would be interested in like an entire video dedicated to winter accessories, I feel like I could totally put that together. But it's just that I personally am not going to be knitting a ton of those, so I didn't have as many on hand just as inspiration for what I'm going to be knitting this year. I am much more of a garment and sock knitter, so I think that's what this video leans more heavily towards. I think I have eight garment patterns that I'm recommending in this video, um, two winter accessory sort of patterns, and five sock patterns. So that's just as a heads up what this video is going to be a little bit more heavily based in. But I still hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me know if you have any requests for specific like pattern recommendation types of videos. I really enjoy putting these together, so I'm definitely interested in doing more in the future. And without further ado, let's get into the pattern recommendations. Okay, sorry if we've moved a little bit. I realized that my camera card was out of space, so I had to delete some stuff. But let's get into the pattern recommendations for the fall and winter. The first pattern that I'm going to be recommending is actually by one of my friends. It is the Winona Polo by Emily Chen, AKA Mnits on Instagram. Um, a funny story with Emily, I actually ran into her one time in New York. I was literally visiting New York for like five days and I just went to this bar and ran into her, which is really funny. Um, but she is so sweet and I love her designs. I think she is making really, really cool things. And the Winona Polo in particular, I think, is just a really versatile fall or winter design. First of all, she has two versions of the pattern. One is a lightweight version, which is made using fingering weight yarn, and the other is a heavyweight version using worsted weight yarn. I personally think that I am going to be knitting the heavyweight version this year, even though I don't have the yarn for it yet. This is just the one thing on my queue that I'm like, I need to knit this this year. I've been wanting to make it for so long and I think it's time that I get around to it. I also love that a lot of the samples that she has made have kind of interesting stripe patterns. I think it's a great stash buster if you have a lot of either worsted or fingering weight yarn sitting around that you could use for this. And I think it's just a really cool design. I love the collar. I love the attention to detail with the wristbands and the hem at the bottom of the polo. I think although it is a relatively simple design in terms of the structural elements, I like that there's so much attention to detail and just so many clean, elements in it that maybe other designers wouldn't have taken the time to sort of incorporate these details into the pattern. So I'm super excited to make this one. I need to figure out a color scheme, but this is definitely going to be the first one up in my queue. My next recommendation is Snow White by Isolde Teague. First of all, I want to say that Isolde is just a very iconic designer. She has been around in the knitting slash fiber arts community for the longest time. And if you don't know who she is, I think you should definitely check out her work. She is super cool. Um, but this is actually a pattern that has been sort of floating around my queue slash my idea of something to make for myself for a few years at this point. So this is another one that I really hope I can get to this year or sometime soon. I think this is just a super cool, innovative design. It is this fitted ribbed top that just has really cool structural elements. The sleeves are knit in this really interesting way where it's like on the back, they are knit um, coming inward and then they come out over your shoulder. I'll try and insert some photos so that you can see more clearly what I'm talking about. Um, but I think that element is super, super cool. And then it also has these really interesting looking darts that form kind of like diagonal sections on the ribbing on the front of the sweater, which I think is also super cool. So this is just a pattern that I really admire for its creativity. And 
I think would be a really fun knit. For me personally, I'd probably make this one a bit more cropped to fit in with my wardrobe a bit better, which I'm not sure if that would be super difficult because it looks like it is bottom up. But I think this one is just a super cool design and I just wanted to share it with you guys. Up next, I want to recommend a pattern that I'm sure many of you have already heard of or seen. It is the Moby sweater by Petite Knit. I knit this sweater a few months ago and I actually, funnily enough, still need to do kind of like the very final finishing on my sweater and that's why I haven't posted pictures of it or anything yet. But I think this one is pretty well known in the knitting community and just petite knits designs in general. I personally found the pattern to be pretty well written and I just think that the design itself with the cable pattern and the different stitch textures is really gorgeous. I think it is the perfect cabled sweater for the fall and winter. And as I will probably mention for a lot of the patterns in this video because this is something that I really look for when it comes to patterns, I do like the attention to detail with the folded over collar as well as the nicely done Italian bind off on the sleeves and at the bottom of the sweater. Again, attention to detail to me is just so important. And I think that Petite Knit really put a lot of attention to detail in this design in terms of having it fit correctly and just look very clean and nice. So this is definitely the one that I would recommend if you're looking for a cable sweater pattern for the winter. This is a great one. I also want to recommend another pattern by one of my Instagram friends, which is the Slicey Blouse by Bronwyn Cannon. I have made one of these myself, so I will put a picture of mine on the screen as well as including a picture of her own sample, which I think is such a cool sample. I love the interesting striping that she does on the sleeves of her sample. I think it really elevates the design and brings it to the next level. But this design I think is really, really cool. I love the contrast of textures between the merino on the sleeves and the sort of worsted weight or wool ribbed pattern on the body. I've talked about this in multiple other videos, so I apologize if you guys have been following me for a while, but I just think this is a really cool design. I will say it was a bit of a challenge for me because the entire yoke of the sweater is done flat with intarsia, so it is a little bit of a challenge in that regard. But I think if you have done a bit of intarsia before or else you're just open to a challenge, this could definitely be a cool next project for you. My next recommendation, and I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce this one, I think it's the Cadigan sweater. I apologize, but I will put the name on the screen for all of these so you guys will know exactly what I'm referring to. Um, but this is by Lily Kate France. This is a knitted top with a square neck and some really cool puffy sleeves. And I just want to say that these are some really interesting design elements that I haven't seen in a lot of knitted garments. I think especially a sweater with a square neck is just really rare to see in a knitted garment. I think it's a lot more common to see kind of like a more typical sweater structure, which would be like a raglan or a just normal crew neck sweater. So it's really interesting for me to see a square neck, especially as someone who actually really loves square necks. I have a number of square neck tops that are just like store-bought in my closet. So I was really happy to see this. And I also love the puffy sleeves as well as the contrast and texture between the body and the sleeves. I think it has just really nice design elements. I've also made a number of Lily Kate France patterns and she always has the best written patterns. She always describes every step of the pattern with a lot of clarity and I really appreciate that. So I will always recommend her patterns in my videos. All right, we're getting a little bit closer to the end of the garment section. Next up, I want to recommend the Launch at Tiffany's blouse by Anne Catherine Stoll. This is a pattern that I saved on Instagram a while back and I have just kept coming back to this as a really, again, unique knitted design. This is another one where I just have seen this design and I've been like, wow, that's really cool. It's really cool that someone figured out how to knit that and then decided to distribute this pattern, even though I know it might've been sort of tricky to size grade or to write up this design. So I just think it's a really cool, interesting design. It is a tightly fitting ribbed blouse, but it has this crossover detail in the front, but as opposed to be a sort of flat knitted wrap top. The wrap detail is actually attached to the bottom part of the blouse, so you don't have to tie it or anything while you're putting it on, which I think is really nice. I have not gotten around to knitting one of this designer's patterns yet, even though there's been several of her designs that I have thought are really innovative and cool and have wanted to cast on, but this has been one that's been floating around in my list of ideas of things to make for quite a while, so I just wanted to share with you guys if anyone was interested in making it. The next design I wanted to share is called the Spot On Sweater by Clara, aka Luna Wear Patterns on Etsy. This is a stranded color work sweater. However, I feel like this is a really cool sort of modern take on stranded color work. This is the kind of sweater that I feel like I would see at a really cool like indie thrift store and be like, this is really cool, but I could definitely knit that. And then I would just never take the time to figure out how to actually knit it. However, I am so glad that someone has taken the time to write up a pattern like this because I just think this is really cool. I think it's a really fun 
funky design and definitely one that I would be interested to have in my wardrobe as more of like an oversized sweater. I also think this would be a really fun one to come up with color combinations for. Okay, and our last recommendation, I don't know how much I would recommend this one for the winter. I guess this is more of like a fall transition piece as it's not really a super warm looking sweater, but I just saw this design and I thought it was so gorgeous that I wanted to share it in one of my pattern um, recommendations videos, and so I'm sharing it now. It is the Antiquity Blouse by Fable Knitwear. Fable Knitwear has such an inspiring um, collection of designs that are within this, in my mind, sort of like cottagecore folklore moment, and I love this one in particular because it just has these gorgeous lace details. I love the collar. It feels very retro to me, and I think that it's a really cool design element that I haven't seen done very often. I was also just talking about how I haven't seen square necks done in knitting a lot, and this is another sort of square neck piece. Um, so I think this one is just really creative, really gorgeous. It's the sort of piece that I would see someone elsewhere and be like, wow, I should really have more pieces like that in my wardrobe. That is gorgeous. All right, we are finally through with the garments. That means we're moving on to some winter accessories. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I am not really a huge winter accessory knitter. I feel like I already have a number of knitted accessories, mostly hats, that I just like don't even have the time to wear all of them because I don't often go to cold places where I need to wear a hat. Um, but that being said, I have a couple of winter accessory recommendations, but again, let me know if you're interested in seeing like a longer video on just winter accessories because I didn't pull too many for this video. The first one is one that I saw on Ravelry a while, a while back and thought it was super cool. It is called Late Bloomer Mittens by Kristen Legit. But these mittens have the coolest embroidery technique on them that forms these really gorgeous puffy flowers on the outside of the mitten, and I think they look so good. The designer also made them in these this gorgeous yellow color, which I think is so fun, but I think it would also be fun in some other sort of like flowery colors, like pink or purple or something. You know me, I am a jewel tone girly till I die, so I just think this would be a lot of fun to see in different colorways. I think this is a fun way to take a kind of basic winter accessory where you're not often going to see the most fun designs and make it really fun and really interesting. My second recommendation is a design that I myself have made. It is the Bray Cap by Jared Flood. And this is just a really fun hat design. It has both cables and lace, so it might not keep your head the driest if you're in like a snowstorm or something. However, I think the combination of cables and lace just makes it a super cute hat design. I personally also made a little pom-pom to fit on mine and I thought that was really, really cute. So I think this is just a fun hat design. It's also a well-written pattern. Jared Flood is another sort of like titan in the knitting industry in my mind. So this is definitely worth checking out if you've been on the lookout for a hat pattern. This is my recommendation. All right, moving on, the last part of this video is going to be recommendations for sock patterns. I am very much a sock knitter, so I have a good number of recommendations for this category, but I know that some people are not the most into knitting socks, in which case I will always have chapters in my video saying which categories are at what which time, so you can feel free to skip over this if you're not interested in sock knitting. Um, the first pattern that I want to recommend, again, I think I've mentioned on my channel many times, but it is the Liesl Socks by Sharon Gerstman. This is a super complex cabled sock with twisted stitches and just like really complex, beautiful cables. I think this is the most gorgeous design in the entire world. I know that not everyone wants to make this sort of incredibly fiddly design, especially when it comes to socks, since they may not be seen by a ton of people. However, I had so much fun knitting this one that I just wanted to recommend it. It was a really fun knit and I think they also came out really beautifully. So if you were just looking for kind of like a fun challenge when it comes to making socks, I would definitely recommend these. I just think they came out so, so beautifully and I love this pattern. My next recommendation, although it also involves cables, I would say it's pretty much on the other end of cabled socks in terms of complexity. They are the BFF socks by Cookie A. Sorry for ranting so much about designers in this video, but Cookie A is another amazing designer. I don't think she's been active for many years at this point, however, she has so many gorgeous sock designs that often when I'm searching Ravelry for a sock design, I'll see her name come up over and over again, and she has a lot of the patterns that I'm really drawn to. This one is a little bit of a simpler one. It is just a pretty simple, repetitive, cabled sock um, with sort of ribbing in between the cables, and I feel like this would actually be a pretty fun and mindless one, honestly, if you're looking for a design that is not just stockinette stitch, but has a little bit more going on. Um, you would really just have to do cables like every few rows and otherwise it would just be pretty basic knitting and purling and it would be, in my mind, pretty mindless. So I think this is a really fun recommendation if you just want a sock with a little bit something more than just plain stock and net, but not so much that you have to actually really focus on it, like the Liesl socks. This is a really fun one and I think it's just really gorgeous. Like, 
these socks look really good, right? Okay, my last cabled sock recommendation and also my last Cookie A sock recommendation. But I found these socks as well when I was searching on Ravelry for just sock designs and I thought they were gorgeous. It is a Callaway socks, also by Cookie A. And I think that these are such an interesting cable design. It also has a bit of lace going on, which is really fun. It has these sort of multi-strand cable designs going on with multiple twists, and then it forms these sort of larger um, ribbing sections in between the twists, which I think is really fun. Then it has some complex lace sort of going on in the areas around the cables. So I just think this is a really cool looking sock design. Again, this is definitely going to be one that you're gonna have to put a little bit more thought and care into making as opposed to just knitting it totally mindlessly. But they look like a really fun challenge and I'm definitely gonna have this one on my list for next time I want to do sort of more interesting and fun sock. All right, can you guys tell that I like cables and texture when it comes to socks? I do have a couple more sock recommendations that are a little bit on the simpler side. These next two pattern recommendations that I have are actually ones that I would recommend more for if you have a variegated yarn or some sort of yarn where you just don't want to do too complex of a sock pattern. The first one is called Charade by Sandra Park. I think this has been one of the most popular sock patterns on Ravelry for quite a while now and for good reason. First of all, it is free and second of all, it is just a relatively simple sock design. It has a little bit of a pattern going on, so it's not just a completely boring stockinette stitch sock. No shade to stockinette stitch socks, but you know, sometimes I personally get a little bit bored of just knitting plain stockinette stitch and I want something more visually appealing. So this one has a little bit of texture on it and it sort of has these vertical bars created by this herringbone rib design, which I think is really fun. Um, this is one that I will probably be knitting very soon. This is just gonna be a really good one for variegated yarn to allow the yarn a bit of a chance to shine, but also give you something a little bit more interesting visually to look at. Okay, and my last recommendation for the fall and winter is the Skew Socks by Lana Holden. I have knit these as well. Again, this is another free pattern. This was published in Knitty, which is a really cool resource with a lot of free patterns. And I think these socks are so much fun. These are again, in my mind, probably the best to be used with some sort of variegated yarn, maybe self-striping yarn, just something where you have a little bit more going on as opposed to just a solid yarn, because if you use a solid yarn, I don't think you'd be able to really see the interesting d design of element of these socks, which is the fact that they are knit in this like diagonal way. And I think this is just such a brilliant design. Like this is another one of those designs that I look at and I'm like, how did someone come up with this and then was actually able to execute it and publish a pattern based off of it? It's insane, it's very impressive to me, and I think that socks knit with this pattern come out looking super cool. So I really just wanted to share this design as another really cool option. Again, if you're looking for a challenge with socks, I will hook you guys up with so many cool sock recommendations. I feel like I am constantly looking at like really cool, interesting sock patterns, and I'm happy to share those with you guys as well. All right, that is it for all of my recommendations for things to knit in the fall and winter of 2023. I think these are all super, super fun designs and I hope that you guys agree. I hope you got some inspiration from this video. If you are still watching, I would appreciate if you left a comment saying which of these designs was your favorite and maybe if you're interested in knitting any of them this year, let me know which ones you'd be interested in making. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.